The NASCAR Pinty Series makes its final stop in Quebec for the 2018 season. And with only three races remaining, the push for championship points is on. We're at Montreal's Motorsport Madhouse, the Autodrome St. Stash for the Lucas Oil 250 on TSN. Welcome to race number 11 of the 2018 NASCAR Pinty Series. We're just north of Montreal in St. Eustache, Quebec for the Lucas Oil 250. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. But Adam, the LeBrosse family has packed their little autodrome. What an atmosphere. 6,000 plus people. This was the autograph session earlier on. It was jam packed, Dave. Local boy done good, Kevin Lacroix, who incidentally has a shop just three kilometers down the road, grabbed the E3 Spark Bloods Pole Award in a time of 17.604 seconds with an average speed of 81.8 miles per hour. Let's get things rolling with Jacques Seguin from Lucas Oil. Gentlemen, start your of NASCAR fill the night sky here in St. Eustache, Quebec. There's a good look at Kevin Lacroix just beside him, the 22, and that car of Mark Antoine Cameron has been fast all day. Well, Scott Stackley was always quick here in the 22 machines. A handful of victories under his belt. David Michaud has one of our onboard cameras in the 56 car tonight. And there's a good look at Andrew Ranger in the number 27 looking to put on a good showing here today in front of a hometown crowd. The cops build on number three is Cole Powell. Dave, he didn't look comfortable in today's practice. Oh, he sure didn't. He struggled, but the field rolling off behind the brand new Dodge Ram 1500 pace truck as we look at the clean flow starting lineup. Laquan Cameron make up row number one. Steven Cote in the 79 and Alex Tagliani in the 18. Row three has Donald Teague in the 24 and LP Dumoulin, our points leader in the 47. Andrew Ranger in the 27, along with the 04 of JF Dumoulin. Taking a look back to row number five, DJ Kennington and Kerry Mix, couple veterans of the series. And then looking back to row number six, that's where we find David Michaud in the 56 and Joy McComb in the 25. In row seven is Cole Powell in that three machine, Simone Dion Vien in the 37. Starting 15th is Adam Martin in the 19, and Brett Taylor in the 46 will start 16th. And all by himself in row nine, it's Larry Jackson from Oakville, Ontario. One of the interesting storylines practice today, hot and sunny was the temperature outside. The track temperature was up. It's very different now as the thermometer starts to dip. Let's take a look at your E3 spark plug race analysis. 250 laps has always been the distance of this race. Last year's winner, Alex LeBay, not with us tonight. And one difference, two breaks in this race, lap 90 and lap 180, Dave. Be interesting to see the strategy. Let's check in with Todd before we go green. Todd? A couple of updates on runners tonight. Bull sitter Kevin Lacroix racing in this car for the first time. It has proven pedigree. It's the championship winning car of Caden Lapsovich. Tested his regular car Friday. It's good on short runs. He hopes this one will be good on long runs, but driver comfort is still an issue. The 17 of DJ Kennington had trained Transmission troubles in practice and locked up and turned him around. He's fine. The transmission replaced. Should be good to go for 250 tonight. DJ Kennington, one of those drivers we'll be keeping an eye on here at St. Eustache. As I mentioned, a veteran. He's got a lot of laps under his belt. I'm going to have fun watching Steve Cote. Glad we've got an onboard in the 79, but it's go time, Dave. The field rolling up onto the front straightaway, watching for the green flag here in the Lucas Oil 250, and Kevin Lacroix on the 74 will lead him to green. We're underway here at St. Eustache. Boy, that was the start that just didn't want to happen. He waited and waited and waited. Finally, they took off. A good start by Lacroix, and a nice job by Cameron. You know, we have to keep remembering He's not a natural oval track racer, but to get to the inside from an outside pole start, that's the first key to success when you're starting on the outside of the front row. That's kind of been what he's done all season long. He really doesn't like to be up on the outside and gets down as early as you can. And he mentioned he did in the number 22 GM Pie Chevrolet. As we take a look a little bit further back, the Mopar Dodge Vander Ranger. A little bit of a handful off turn four. And you see LP Dumoulin in the 40. 
seven sliding backwards as we ride on board David Michaud. And you can see what a handful these Goodyear tires are before they come up to temperature. These drivers are busy behind the wheel. Good drive off both ends by three. And also you can see how unique this track is, how flat it is, and how hard it is to get by. This track date to me is similar to Barry Speedway that we used to go to. It's not shaped the same, but it gives crew chiefs the same kind of anxiety that Barry Night. used to. Night. Night. A little bit of contact as they battle for fourth between Alex Tagliani, third and fourth rather, Tagliani and Steve Cote. But this is kind of a wild card race. Anything can happen at a track like this. When we watch LP Dumoulin sliding backwards, this is not a place where you can lay back. Well, Steve Cote in that 79 did well in practice and had a great qualifying effort. That car prepared into the Dave Jacobs shop and uh, run earlier this year by Pete Shepard in the 79 as well. There's Adam Martin in the 19, the Johnsonville Ford Fusion chasing uh, Kerry Mix in the 02. And I thought I saw smoke out of DJ Kennington in three and four. This is the same angle. Yeah, they're definitely yeah. smoke. That's a lot of it as we ride on board his teammate, Andrew Ranger. So Ranger just in front of the Castro Dodge of DJ Kennington. As we watch our onboard tonight, particularly in turn one, Dave, there is a huge bump. It's almost more of an elevation change than a bump, and it upsets these cars. The driver that can handle those bumps the best is going to be successful in this race. Yeah, it's right on the inside apex of turn one as Kennington in the Castro Edge Dodge takes a look underneath Andrew Ranger, but aggression is something that all of the drivers need in order to move forward here at St. Estache. This is a bull run. You've got to time your moves, and most passes here at St. Estache involve a little bit of contact. You might not initiate it with contact, but when you get a nose under somebody, it's really hard to get that run without any rubbing. So Kevin Lacroix leading in the early going here of the Lucas Oil 250 at St. Estache, Quebec, but he has a lot of pressure coming from behind. This NASCAR on TSN race from Autodrome St. Estache is brought to you by VP Racing Fuels. By Total Quartz Engine Oil, high technology for your engine. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow, one honey of a lube. Welcome back to St. Estache, Quebec. You can see the action on the track, but we had action during our commercial break. The 19 of Adam Martin making contact with the 04 of J.F. Dumoulin. And J.F. Dumoulin right now is about half a straightaway ahead of race leader Kevin Lacroix. And Adam Martin has some serious problems with that race car. And the hood all crumpled up. He's already been on pit lane. But the crew trying to make the necessary repairs to get the Justin's Rookie of the Year from last year back out on the track. There you see it. And, and the big issue there is visibility. I think they're, they're getting rid of the hood altogether. It'll probably get back out on the track, missing a few body pieces on that race car. Side by side, there's Adam Martin's teammate, the 79 of Stephen Cote, former track champion here at St. Estache, tucked in behind the two DJK racing cars. Yeah, Andrew Ranger and DJ Kennington, they practiced together early on, and they're together on the racetrack again. LP Dumoulin definitely looks faster than Cote. Right, three back there, 27. Logo, okay? Speaking of faster, Mark Antoine Cameron is really closed in on Kevin LeBlanc. Yeah, there's any oil on your windshield here on the front stretch. Well, there you hear a call to check if there's oil on the windshield. I believe that's from behind the 17 of DJ Kennington. Well, we saw, saw smoke out of that race car, but look at this, a battle for the lead. They touch in the corner. There's that aggression that you need to make a pass here at St. Estache, and it's Cameron who brings out the guns early, and he knocks the 74 up to the outside groove. Look at Lacroix, dive back down into second to hold that spot. Yeah, he aggressively got back to the bottom. Tagliani is still digging to the inside, but Lacroix closes the door. Tagliani in the EpiPen, Rona Chevrolet. Clear, 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 clear. You can see the 74 of Lacroix unable to keep it down low.
as he could early in this race. And remember, it's an unfamiliar race car. Cade Lapsovich drove that car. And one thing I learned today, talking to Kevin, they don't swap seats in their race cars. So most of his cars have seats from J.R. Fitzpatrick. Now this car has a seat from Cade Lapsovich, and he says, just different than what I'm used to. Well, that's what Todd was mentioning, some comfort issues. <laughs> You can still see a little trail of smoke from behind the Castrol Dodge. That is your points leader just in behind the WeatherTech Dotsie Dodge, the 47 of LP Jumelay. On board now, DJ. You can see both of those cars execute the bumps in one and two. Andrew Ranger's getting a really nice run off the corner. And as we scroll backwards through our grid, Cole Powell starting to make gains. He's broken into the top ten. Here he is taking ninth spot from David Michaud, who is way up towards the wall. Oh, and he has to grab a handful of wheel to keep that car down as Cole Powell sets sail. He opens up a five-car length lead in just one straightaway. Well, Michaud was almost out of the ballpark there in three and four, so Powell on the inside able to drive away. There we see Adam Martin at Johnsonville 19 without the hood, and I'm pretty impressed with J.F. Dumoulin in the 0-4. Lacroix was half a straightaway behind to put him a lap down. Now, even though Cameron's taking the lead, Jay Up is up ahead, passing cars to avoid going a lap down. Good battle for third there between the 18 of Tagliani, and there's Donald Teach in the 24, the Circuit Acura Chevrolet. So Teach starting to flex his muscle after picking up his first NASCAR win earlier this season. This is really something where I think the two brakes in this race is going to play a role, because I really have to believe the crew chiefs are reminding their drivers quite often, look, we know there's going to be a yellow at nap, lap 90. Stay on the lead lap. We look at the battle for 10th between Michaud and Kerry Mix. Kerry Mix in the Leland 0-2 Ford Fusion. He knows his way around, and he's not afraid to rough people up. Contact with the 56 of Misho, and Misho sitting stopped on the inside of turn four. That's going to draw the caution. Kerry Mix was soon going to go a lap down. It's been a while since we've seen Kerry fast enough to care this much to bring out a yellow. There you see the contact that sends Misho around. He got on the brakes hard enough to avoid that pit wall. Look at that front bumper. The best front bumper in all of motorsports, Dave. That's Kerry Mix. Kerry Mix uses it. We're under caution here. 62 laps in the books. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil 250 on TSN from St. Estache, Quebec. Beautiful shot of this interesting tight raceway built in 1966 originally as a road course, stretched out to a drag strip later that year, 1967. This was built, the super tight oval. It sure does bring the entertainment, Dave. I know it makes the drivers nervous, but the fans come by the thousands to watch. Camping here as well. It's packed as Donald Teach moves up to second spot. And look at the front. Oh, we got a car in the wall. Wow, heavy contact between Alex Tagliani and the front stretch wall. You can see both of his right side tires are coated in white from the concrete. Yeah, that was the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Lock, looked to get loose off turn four. Made contact with the Rona EpiPen Chevrolet and the tag had nowhere to go but into the wall. It cost him a bunch of spots too. Tag the Annie almost out of the top ten. Watch Ranger on the inside. He hasn't quite cleared Alex. Wow. Yeah, he didn't get loose. He just didn't quite get clear. And the 17 of DJ Kennington said, I need to go through that hole as well. So Kerry Mix makes use of that restart. He's up ahead of LP Duma and, of course, right behind Tagliani, who got into the wall. So Kerry Mix feeling racy tonight, Dave. And just ahead of your points leader, remember, LP Dumoulin comes into this one 14 points ahead of the field in the lead after three wins so far in 2018. He's been Mr. Consistent. Well, he's just done a great job. And how about this battle? They're still together on the racetrack. Andrew Ranger in the 27, DJ Kennington, just a little nudge going into the corner. So Sparks from that still there. DJ still there underneath the 27 of Andrew Ranger, but Ranger slams the door on his teammate. No love lost here between these two. They'll race as hard as they can on the track. There's nothing better than hearing a spotter say he's still there and watching the driver cut him off anyhow. And as we look at the laps, we are approaching the first of two breaks uh, as mandated by NASCAR. 
Oh, and this could bring the yellow that they would use as the break. Simone Dion got around in the Castrol 37. The yellow lights indeed are out on the speedway. So this is going to bunch things up once again. There is your race leader in the GFIA Chevrolet Camaro. Mark Antoine Cameron has been the class of the field as we take a look at the VP Race Fuels race summary. Dave, we've had two leaders and one lead change. Of course, Kevin Lacroix led the start. Mark Antoine Cameron overtook him. Two cautions for 12 laps and still 14 cars on the lead lap. Uh, so this will give the crowd a chance to stretch their legs as you'll see the cars in the pits. Let's go down to Todd Lewis. Todd? NASCAR officials have given the signal. Teams are now free to work on their car. The 18 hustle over the wall, and fuel is going into that 18 car for Alex Tagliani. Also now going to do some tires. They were looking at it because Alex thought he might have a tire issue after some contact. Now there's a discussion. 74 getting fuel, and that should be it for their service. Well, now Alex Tagliani he should be worried about damage on the right side of the car. Let's ride. into the wall, but Dave, it's been 20 to 30 laps since then. I, I can't believe this emergency tire's going on the 18. That's I, good news for the Alex Tagliani team. As he gets new right side rubber, none of the other teams took tires during that stop well, in the first break. Nobody would take tires now. You'd wait till the second break, but if NASCAR gave me two extra tires, I'd probably take advantage. Would you complain? <sighs> Well, Tagliani will have to fight his way through the field. We're looking for the restart. Cameron and LT jump on his outside. The green flag waves once again, and we're back underway. Could even start. Donald T's doing a great job on the outside, but even that veteran with hundreds and hundreds of laps here at St. His Dash, I don't think he can fend them off from the outside groove. It is so tough on the outside. A lot of the drivers telling me prior to tonight's race that the surface here at St. His Dash, Quebec, is very, very coarse. It wears these tires very quickly. Oh, I would watch for Alex Tagliani. I mean, if nothing is bent on that race car from the impact, he should tear through this field. His tires have 100 laps less than anybody else's. There you see Teej up on the outside trying to hang on as he rides alongside the number 17 of DJ Kennington just in behind last year's winner in the Mopar Dodge and more problems, the CBRT number 46, Brett Taylor, around in turn two. Our Justin's Rookie of the Year leader sitting sideways in turn two as the yellow comes out. And a busy night for CBRT, Dave. They have three cars in competition today. Yeah, Brett Taylor, a little bit of damage to the front. Let's have another look at what happened. It'll be closer to the back of the field than the front. It looked like Taylor checked up a little bit because Cole Powell and J.F. Dumoulin had something going on. Dion Bien did not see that. And there's the damage as a result on the front of the 37. A huge crowd here in St. Estache, Quebec, and big support from a couple big sponsors of this series in GM Pie and Spectra Premium. Everybody enjoying a very tight race. And of course, bumper to bumper, always red shirts all over our races. A sports with Kevin Lacroix being so close. This is his hometown. We need down there, you the full. We need to tip the hat to Alan and Jason LaBrosse, along with Alex uh, LaBrosse as well. They have done a great job organizing today's event. They really are great promoters, Dave. I mean, when you talk about track owners and you talk about promoters, they fall into the promoter category. So then a quarter bumper, so their bumper inside. Almost three wide there as Cote took a look underneath both the 24 and the 27. Cote, no stranger here to St. Estache. You just about dropped the anchor going into the corners here because there's zero degrees of banking. It is flat, flat. And if you've got a car beside you, sometimes you can use them a little bit to help you around the turn. That's an interesting corner, though. Turn four, you have that jut of a wall that comes out the pit wall, and you just get so close to it as DJ Kennington is going to force his way through. There's the number one of Larry Jackson. Started last on the field. He's starting to work his way forward. He's doing a nice job right behind Cole Powell. He was quick in practice earlier on. He showed speed, and he's in the top ten. 
once again, the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger with DJ Kennington. His shadow, that has been the story of the race for those two. But look, the bumper to bumper number 74 is starting to make a move back to the front. Outside. Cote gathered it back up after a quick little bump from the 27 of Andrew Ranger. And Cote still hanging out in that outside lane. He's doing a pretty good job out there. And that's how you... Inside, 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 inside. Steve Cote's spotter giving instruction. And can you see the difference between... Ranger and Kennington, you've got Steve Simmons and you've got Joe Chisholm Jr. as their spotters. They have a very calm tone. I'm not sure who Steve Cote's spotter is there. A little more excitable. So all drivers, they all want something a little bit different. Well, realistically, other than the driver, the spotter is the busiest person here at the track trying to help these drivers navigate traffic as Didar and now Kerry Mix in the old 2 the Leland Ford Fusion slides underneath the 79. Kerry Mix has a fast race car, still looking pretty clean. That means he hasn't rubbed up with too many other race cars on the track. You've got to keep all four wheels under you. And how about the 04 of J.F. Dumoulin? He was almost lapped earlier on. That car has some speed in it. Cote still stuck on the outside. The defending track champion here at St. Estache. Autodrome St. Estache is trying to get up to that opening just ahead of the Spectrum Premium 04 of J.F. Dumoulin. He was also the Quebec champion in NASCAR. So regional championships, home track championships. Steve Cote is an accomplished racer. Remember the Rona EpiPen number 18 of Alex Tagliani. Two new right side tires. He'll make quick work of the 79 of Cote. Finally gets to the inside. But Tagliani is continuing his march to the front. Cole Powell still learning. Every lap he's learning how to drive this racetrack. He's in tough though. These drivers know their way around this place. Now we talked about getting stuck up on the outside. The 79 of Cote went from third all the way back to 10th. And now... Look at Tagliani go. Ducks underneath your points leader in the WeatherTech Dacia number 47, uh, LP Dumoulin. How come this guy came that close to me in that spot? I need to know that way earlier than that. I was trying to work my mind around these guys. And this is not fair from NASCAR. Let this guy go and change tires because he hit the wall. And now he's got good tires to run around. So f***ing cheap. Well, where LP's mistaken, those aren't change tires Tagliani used. They're emergency tires. What does that mean? He's still got four fresh Goodyear tires in the pits. I, I don't disagree with LP. It doesn't seem fair, Dave. Well, you can tell his frustration as the 18 was able to close the gap very, very quickly. And under caution once again for another spin by the 37 of Simone Dion Vienne. That's again in turn number two as he writes the ship and heads down the back straightaway. He does a good job of keeping that car running. Let's have a look at the points going into tonight. LP Dumoulin with a points lead. 14 markers over Alex Tagliani. That's why he's so frustrated. Alex Tagliani is chasing him in the points battle. He doesn't want to give up any advantage to the 18. And you can't blame Tagliani. His crew chief, Tyler Case, he's as good as anybody at lobbying NASCAR officials and trying to find an advantage. That's his job. Field reset. We're back underway. Once again, Outside it's... Only here. Three wide. Three wide, you're in the middle. Three Outside wide, deeper in the pack, and it's Tagliani going to the inside. He's going to push Andrew Ranger up to the outside lane. And that's Joe Chisholm talking to Andrew Ranger. I think Ranger would rather be on the outside than the middle of three wide, so that didn't work out as badly as it could have, but there again, Tagliani, he's making quick work of this field. We hit the halfway mark as the cross flags shown, and Tagliani underneath... The Circuit Acura number 24 of Donald Teach. Teammates, and Teach just sort of gives him that inside lane and lets Tagliani go to work on your leader. Cameron, now remember, both those cars are stackly prepared race cars. So no surprise they'd both be quick. Donald Teach as well in the 24 prepared out of the Steckley shop. And here we have a battle. Look, the 17's racing with someone that's not his teammate. <laughs> well, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix on the bumper and bumper total. 
Dodge Challenger. Remember what Todd said off the top of the show. His own car, his old car, was good on short runs. They were looking for something better on long runs, and this looks to be it. Well, Kate, Kate Lapsovich was always better. Tagliani gets down onto the... You saw him clip the curving, and now into the lead goes the Rona MVP Chevrolet, the number 18 of Alex Tagliani, your new race leader here in the Lucas Oil 250. And did you hear the instructions from Warren Jones? Let him go, get in behind him right away. Well, again, those two are teammates, too. They know the story of what happened in the pit, so uh, Mark Antoine Cameron's going to slot in behind and follow him along for a little while. Whoa, Lacroix in the 47 of Dumoulin, and Dumoulin goes around in two and a big cloud of smoke. He tried to keep that car straight. Caution is out, and that's good news for L.B. Dumoulin as he'll be able to get back onto the tail of the lead lap without going a lap down. We'll have another look at what happened. Okay, so Dumoulin, a little bit of a bump. That was a bump on the Kevin 74. More. Hey, you know what's interesting? There was a press conference this week, Dave, for this event. The LaBrosse family put it on, and Kevin Lacroix said, I may not be a factor in the championship, but I do have the hammer. So we'll see if that hammer comes out again. Tagliani leads. Welcome back to race number 11 of the 2018 NASCAR Pinty Series Championship. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross in the booth. Todd Lewis is patrolling the pits for us here tonight. Back under green once again, Alex Tagliani, your leader. And look at Cameron get down to the inside. Hard left right across the start-finish line. Thankfully, it's his teammate Donald Teach. Right now, Scott Stegley has three of the top four running cars. Andrew Ranger has broken up their little party in the front. How about an old-school racer, the 0-2 of Kerry Mix in the Leland Ford Fusion. He's inside the top five. You know, he's doing a fantastic job. I want to talk about the lap run, lap 144. Remember, the next break is lap 180. Steve Cote, who hasn't had a lot of experience in our race cars, said, I consider this a 70-lap race tonight. We just have to get to lap 180, the final break. We're all going to get tires. We're all going to make adjustments. And then the race really begins. And there he's chasing the one of Larry Jackson and the three of Cole Powell. That's a battle for ninth spot. Larry Jackson up on the outside. He was very, very fast in practice earlier on today. Unfortunately, stumbled a little bit in qualifying, but said, I have a good car in this one love Ford Fusion, and I'm going to make it to the front. He likes passing race cars. Larry Jackson <laughs> traditionally starts at the back of our fields. Remember, it wasn't too long ago that Spectre Premium 04 of J.F. Dumoulin was threatened to go a lap down. He's now back in the fray. Looking good, that 04 machine, the Spectre Premium car. Spectre Premium, like you said, I believe they said they have 95 guests sitting over in turn number two cheering for that driver. Look at Donald Teach all over the back bumper, the 27 of Andrew Ranger. That's a battle for third spot. And this one for ninth continues on. They're still side by side. It's pretty impressive of Larry Jackson to work the outside as well as he is. Cole Powell offering him a lot of respect on the bottom. He's giving him room to operate. Yeah, Cole Powell new to the NASCAR Pinty Series as he slides up in turn number one, tries to hang on to it, opens the door for Larry Jackson to come back on the inside, and he will do it. Jackson sticks it down low. These two having a whale of a dice. And now it'll be up to Larry Jackson to give Cole some room to operate, which generally he does. And here we have it. The Stuckley cars are one, two, three. Donald Teach up into third spot underneath the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger as we ride on board, Ranger. we've seen here at Autodrome St. Estash increased lighting here at the track. From that onboard shot from Andrew Ranger, you can just see how much brighter it is, and a little bit of contact into one and two. The drivers can clearly see each other, so they can get into each other battle for fifth. Man, LaCroix sailed it into that corner. DJ Kennington. Close. 
That was close as Jackson and Mix were tied together. Jackson almost caught that inside wall. And here's the three now of Cole Powell trying to follow through in the hole. That was the soothing voice of Susan Mix talking to her husband, Carrie, on the radio. She's been his spotter, Dave. I've been doing this job 12 years, and she's been his spotter. Nobody behind the 47 if you want it. Yeah, you can hear her. Her voice is... Okay, we'll get it back. Here, just get the little up. Now, now Carrie's going to settle down just in front of the 25. Another CBRT entry of Joey McComb. Normally the team manager jumping back behind the wheel here at Auto Drove St. Stash. Joey McComb has been nearly invisible tonight, and that's a great compliment at St. Stash because this is a place where things happen explosively. He's on the lead lap. He's having a good run. As every driver ever says in an interview, I'm biding my time. Yeah, he just wanted to keep the nose clean on that car in the early going. Hopefully make a run towards the end of this race as LP Dumoulin, a little fired up from that spin just a short time ago. He's trying to move back up to the front as he dives underneath the cops build on number three of Cole Powell. Once again, we're getting closer and closer to the second break in the race, which realistically will be the That's final cool. pit stop for most of our contenders. Alex Tagliani, though, not able to stretch out too much of a gap. He's mired in traffic. Stephen Cote just ahead of him, and look who's on his back bumper. The 22 GM Pie Chevrolet and Mark Antoine Cameron. You can see what Tagliani did in the last corner. He drifted up high to carve it down low, and the yellow flag comes out. The 22 of Cameron just stays low. That car is hooked to the bottom groove. So break number two, and this will mean wholesale changes as we take a look at your Leland race summary. Adam? Alex Tagliani is the third leader of the night. He leads at this point. Six cautions for 30 laps, and still a lot of cars on the lead lap. 13 cars, Dave. And a lot of cars down in the pits. It's a busy place. Todd? Once again, the signal given, teams go to work. The 18 has already done their fuel, so they will change four Goodyear tires, make some minor handling adjustments for Alex Tagliani to take him the distance. The 22 team just finished fueling. Now they will make an adjustment as well, as well as four fresh Goodyears. They'll put a spring rubber in the left rear to help Mark Antoine Camera try to catch his teammate. So you don't see the thrash that you normally would in the pits because they get an amount of time that they don't have to hurry, Dave. It's a very calm pit road tonight in St. Eustache. Up until tonight, Lachini Quebec's Alex Tagliani had only led for seven laps here at Autodrome St. Eustache. He's out in front here in the Lucas Oil 250. This is not a racetrack that Alex Tagliani has seen success at. He's doing a good job right now, leading the way, and Cameron once again gets to the bottom of the racetrack. It's hard to believe a driver like Alex Tagliani only has a career best finish of fifth place here at this track. Oh, and we hear it. Oh, there it is, oh. the old four, and then it, the number three of Cole Powell gets into him. <laughs> that reminds me of Toronto when he spun out. So that was the fastest spin. JF went around backwards, and he was sitting backwards on the racetrack. Watch him go into the turn, contact with Kennington, and there he's sitting. And the three, it almost like he accelerated in his spin. The 0-4 car is mangled. Yeah, that Spectra Premium Radiator, unfortunately, no longer intact as we go back to green fairly quickly here in St. Estache, Quebec, and once again, it's Tagliani up front. Mark Antoine Cameron not successful this time in getting right to the bottom. Teammate Donald T up the inside behind him is Kevin Lacroix. This will be tough for Cameron. And you see Andrew Ranger up on the outside as well. LP Dumoulin down low. And it will be a train to the inside. You see, there goes Curie Mix tucked in behind DJ Kennington. And now, finally, Cameron will get in behind the bumper-to-bumper -to -bumper Total number 74 off Kevin Lacroix. That could have been a whole lot worse as DJ goes around in turn four. I believe that was Kerry Mix that was right behind him. Yeah, DJ Kennington getting the benefit of that open pit road area. Caution finally flies as he struggles to get that car refired, and he does to avoid going a lap down. Have another look. Uh, that is what it appears. <laughs> Listen, a touch in the right place or the wrong place, depending which driver you were. Alex Tagliani out front under caution. 
In nine races here at Autodrome St. Eustache, six different drivers have visited Victory Lane. Will we see another one here on the Lucas Oil 250? We're set to go back under green. It's Alex Tagliani, Kevin Lacroix going into turn number one. Two of the most aggressive drivers in our series, rubbing fenders off the corner. There you see David Michaud as we ride on board in the 56. He's up on the outside. He's having a pretty decent day, a spin early on, but he's still on the lead lap. Yeah, David's doing a nice job in that Jim Gray old 56. Inside door, inside door, 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 inside. Never your house. So Ken Katu telling Alex, he's, he's all the way up there. The next thing he's got to try to do is find Alex a hole to get down. Alex might have just laid one. You look at both of those cars, Kevin Lacroix and Alex Tagli. Any black marks down either side gives you an indication of how physical this race has been. Well, as we said, it was going to be a 70-lap race. It started after the break at 180. Now it's time to use what you've got, Dave. So Andrew Ranger up on the outside. You can't really use that second lane as Andrew Ranger normally likes to do on an oval track. He's hanging on in the Mopar Dodge, but he's got an ultra-fast number 22, a Mark Antoine Cameron knocking on the back door. And if you get a chance, if we stay on this shot, watch how close Cameron comes to the wall, exiting turn four on the inside of the racetrack, Dave. Not intimidated at all. And you can see now he finishes that pass on the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Even the camera looked away. <laughs> Breathtaking. Well, you can see the cars maneuvering the bumps in the middle of one and two, as you mentioned, off of turn number two as well. Definitely upset some of these cars a lot more than others. And you can see it right there, the arc he was taking coming off as we've got Cole Powell in the cops build all number three to the inside of Steve Cote. Battle for seventh spot. Cote is going to think better of hanging up on the outside, but look at Gary Mix. Got a bumper down low, and he got the 79 loose. Cote hangs on to it. David showed. That's jumping into the gator pond right there, messing with the back bumper of Kerry Mix as L.P. Dumoulin gets around Andrew Ranger. Yeah, so Ranger seems to be sliding back just a little bit after that final pit stop. You remember, brand new tires on this Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger, and it doesn't seem to be working as well as he'd like. No, it certainly doesn't. As DJ to the inside of David Michaud, recovering from that spin. Kennington still has a fast car. And plenty of laps to do it as he races for the 10th spot. Yeah, you can see Michaud getting a little bump up on the outside. And now he'll try and get back down to the inside behind the Castro Dodge of DJ Kennington. DJ, a win under his belt here. Oh, Dave, turn three. three. Oh, turn we three, big, we got him stacked up. Big problems, and a couple of the CBRT cars involved. Brett Taylor, Joey McComb, and Simone Dion Vienne in the Castro 37 as well. Not the first time Dion Vienne and Taylor got together. And Dave, I think the fun is just beginning. We're into the nitty gritty now here at St. Eustache, Quebec. 18 laps to go. Hometown boy Kevin Lacroix is the leader in this one in the 74. As we go back to green here on the front straightaway, Alex Tagliani up on the outside. Kevin Lacroix with his notorious slow restarts always gets him a good launch into the corner. Tagliani trying to close the door, but Cameron was there. Oh, did he ever sneak up on the inside? The GM Pai wow. Chevy Camaro breaks and got crossways. It's a good thing Tagliani was there. That was all sorts of sideways. Give Cameron the second spot and Tagliani's in trouble. He's sliding back. You see Dumoulin go through on the inside. Now here comes Tiege as well to pick up a position. How about Cole Powell in the three? Powell, bit of a wiggle. I think there was a rub there going into the corner. He goes by. Here goes Cote as well. Boy, if you listen to Cole Powell on the radio after practice and in qualifying, he did not like this track, but it seems to be growing on him a little bit. He's moving forward. Kerry Mix, what a move he just made to the inside of Tag. Going into turn one, he drove all the way down to the pit exit and made it stick. Stephen Cote in the 79 settling well into that Dave Jacobs prepared machine. The Ford Fusion now tucked back in behind the three. Those two have been around each other. Quite a bit more contact towards the front. Wow, he did teach. Got in the corner about three times there. The left rear corner of Dumoulin just trying to lighten him up to make his move. Now we'll make the move in turn one. Battle for third spot. Dumoulin's going to try and hang on to the outside. Look at this. Three wide, deeper in the pack. Tagliani on the middle. He'll squirt through going into turn number three. 
three. Coche is up on the outside, and he's going to lose some more spots. Here we go with Adam for the lead. Camera into the inside of Lacroix. Lacroix cannot hold off the GM Paye number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. The Total bumper to bumper 74 drops into second spot. Could you imagine with the number of people GM Paye has here tonight? Can you imagine Cameron getting his first NASCAR win on the toughest oval of them all? This place would erupt for sure. Cameron has been solid, as I mentioned. He was fast in practice. He was quick in qualifying as well. And now he's up at the front, the leader of this race with 10 laps to go. Cannington, that was a cunning move. Just get up on the bumper, and it's not really a nasty bump. He's just lightning. He showed up, trying to get him up the racetrack a little, and he does. He'll try to finish his move in three. You can see Michaud sailing the front end of that race car down the back straightaway, settling it down into the corners, but that car not quite sticking as well as the Castro edge on to DJ Kennington. Battle for second now. Tee up the inside of Kevin Lacroix. A little bit of a rub there in turn three. Lacroix once again pushed to the outside. We'll have to duck in behind. Another Scott Steckley racing entry. The 24 of Teach to second. And here goes LP Dumoulin right behind them as we've got Alex Tagliani on the inside of Cole Powell. That's a battle for fifth spot. Cole Powell will give him something back. A little bit of upper tag there between Powell and Alex Tagliani as we ride on board the cops build all number three. With, with all of the steering Cole was doing going into the corner, he was still trying to get to the back bumper of the 18 car. Pedaling it away. You can hear the engine off and on, off and on. But we're watching this battle for third between the 74 of Kevin Lacroix and the 47 of LP Jubilee. They had some fireworks earlier on in this race. And right behind them is Alex Tagliani. So our two points contenders, one behind the other. There will be five laps to go when these two cross the line. Tagliani just in behind this battle as well. In through one and two once again. Look at Dooley able to pinch down on the inside, making contact with the 74. Just got me contact coming off the corner. Send the quad towards the outside. Here goes Tagliani to the bottom. So Dooley goes into third spot. Tagliani now in the battle for fourth. Contact between the 74 and the 47 again. Look at the 18. Hops up in the back. Two cars go around. Smoke show again. What kind of damage Dumoulin or Tagliani have? Doesn't appear to be too bad on the WeatherTech.ca number 47 of Dumoulin. You see some fiberglass. He's on the track. Let's take another look. Going into the corner. Lacroix made some contact. Tag to the inside. Tag was looking to get by on the bottom, but everybody gets into it. And there you see some words between the two crews, the 47 of Dumoulin and the 74 of Lacroix. Right on board, Lacroix. Bit of a bump there to Dumoulin. They both have to check up and tag Leanne. He's full speed ahead of him in the last five laps of the race. And get this, Kevin Lacroix has been parked for the night. Three laps to go. A green-white checker. Look at the nose hanging off. The cops build all number three of Cole Powell as he battles for second, now third. Tagliani sneaks up on the inside. Teach way up on the outside. He's going to have a tough fight to stay there. Tag looks to get to the back bumper. Cameron, remember their teammates, but I don't think Tagliani cares. Cameron has half a lot to go. Cameron has been so solid on the road and street courses in the Pinty Series here on an oval. He will win for the first time in his NASCAR career. He has been close before. He has finished runner-up before. And finally, it's come to a true, it's come true for Mark Antoine Cameron. The smile, the cheers, the celebration with his team, and another Stott Steckley driver has his first ever NASCAR Pinty Series victory.
comes down to celebrate with his team. Mark, you have told me a few times, I'm going to win one of these things. I'm going to win one of these things. You had to fight for it tonight, but you got that victory. So proud of that team with the 22 racing, GM Paye. You know, we did it, finally. Was close a couple of times this year. And today, we know, you know, we got a good car all, all, all race long. And the last 10 lap, it was like a, on a dream. It was a dream for me. So thanks to GM Paye. They put me on that 20 cool cars. Unbelievable. Thanks to my crew chief. Randy, stay clear. The best of the guy, the best of the business. Thank you so much, guys. Mark Antoine Camaret is a winner at Sadie Stash. Oh, there'll be a party here tonight for sure. Mark Antoine Cameron has been waiting for that one for a long time. Let's take a look at the final results. Cole Powell comes from nowhere to finish third tonight. Kerry Mix with a great fourth place run. How about David Michaud sixth? Now, taking a look at the latter half, Larry Jackson fades to 11th. Brett Taylor, there's Kevin Lacroix, and Joey McComb unfortunately failed to finish here tonight. This is going to make a huge difference in the point standings with just two races to go. Dumoulin still leads just five points the distance. And look at Cole Powell and DJ Kennington. They are sneaking up, and it's a battle really for anywhere in the final point standings. If you're not racing for the win, you're racing for that one spot ahead of you. What a celebration on the podium. Cameron Tagli and he's second. Cole Powell third. Monodrome St. Estash, the Montreal Motorsport Madhouse. This NASCAR on TSN telecast has been brought to you by Mopar. We built it, we know it. And by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. Our last show in Quebec, and from here we make history going south of the border to the United States. It'll be at New Hampshire International Raceway, the Visit New Hampshire 100 from all of us at Fuel Media Lab. We'll see you stateside. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.